At center number two, you're going to be doing some practice using word parts to define and build words, as well as learning a little bit more about Leonardo da Vinci. So at your seat, um, you have this handout. And if you lose it, then you know exactly where you can go to find it. One of the things that your, your seat is a page protector that has this information on it. And it's going to have your example and some example fonts um, that show what Renaissance calligraphy might have looked like. So to start with, let's talk about what is calligraphy. Calligraphy, the art of beautiful handwriting. The term may derive or come from the Greek words for beauty and to write. It implies a sure knowledge of the correct form of letters and the skill to make them with harmony of proportions that the experienced, knowledgeable eye will recognize such composition as a work of art. That's a little bit wordy. Really, what they're trying to say here is that calligraphy is more of an art form and it has to do with how the, the, the handwriting appeals to the sense of art in your eyes as you look at it. Calligraphic work as art need not be legible in the usual sense of the word. So you're going to see that it's a little bit more decorated. And here are some different examples of fonts. Now at your seat um, on the blackboard, there should be a little basket there that has some different calligraphy pens. And you may use one today to do your work um, if you choose. Uh, it has a flat tip, so it might be a little bit hard to get used to at first. Um, and you'll probably find unless that you pick up on this very quickly, that your letters really aren't going to look that similar to this. It really is an art form and something that you would have to practice to get really good at. Um, but it can be fun. So what you're really going to be doing here is you have this handout here that has some different words. And you're going to focus on this I can statement. I can use Greek and Latin roots and affixes, which are suffixes and prefixes and reference materials to determine the meanings of unknown words. So if you look up the meanings of the word parts here, X, com, ik, and eight, you're going to find out what each of those wor word parts mean. And then you're going to build a definition. So to model that for you, let's go back to my example of calligraphy. And I would suggest that you keep this page protector out as an example for you. Um, and again, you can always go back and watch this video um, if you need some help. But I'm going to tell you that this is probably going to be a little bit challenging. Uh, the answers aren't going to be right there. So you're really going to have to do some of that problem solving that we talked about last week. Before you ask a neighbor, I really want you to think about how you're doing this. And remember, I'm not always concerned with 100% right answers. Um, you're really just looking at how can you um, put these ideas together to try and figure out different words and their meanings. So if you look at the word calligraphy, we could break this word apart into three different parts. Cali, graph, and then I know why is a suffix that I see in a lot of words. So to define this, um, you're going to go and look up, try to figure out what each of these word parts means. Um, and I was going to give you um, a website that you could go to. You might find one that you like as you start going through this, and you can use that one. But I'm going to start by just Googling it. Cali, the word part, and definition. And you'll see that you can get to dictionary.com, um, Merriam-Webster dictionary, Sometimes there's actual dictionaries that specifically work on word parts. Um, but I'm going to try this first one, see what dictionary.com tells me. And it says a combining form meaning beautiful. So when I see Cali in different words, then it means beautiful. And so that's what you can type in, or you can write, you would write in in that box under the word for meaning. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I wonder if I could use dictionary.com for this again. Graph. Now one thing, let me go back here and point out to you, you can see that there's a, a little hyphen after Cali that indicates that it's not a word by itself. It's um, a prefix or a suffix or a root depending on where that, um, that hyphen is. So if you look at the word graph, you can see there is no hyphen there. I really want to look at graph, the combining form, um, and here I see a combining form meaning drawn or written. So I'm going to put that here, drawn or written. 
and since I'm having some success using this website, I'm going to go ahead and use y, and I know y is a suffix. Here it's talking about y the letter, the 25th letter of the alphabet. That's not what I'm talking about or looking for. Here again, I see, oh, I see it as a prefix. Here I know it's at the end of the word, so the hyphen here indicates that the rest of the word would be on this side. Y is going to be something that we would find at the end, and it means characterized by or inclined to. So on the right, characterized by or inclined to. Now what I want you to do before you try to look up the word is think about if these three parts of the word were put together, how could I put all three of them into one definition that makes a little bit of sense? So, let's see, I could start by characterized by beautiful drawn. Now, of course, that doesn't really make sense, but maybe I could change the form of drawn. Characterized by beautiful, oops, drawing or writing. Characterized by beautiful drawing or writing. So now I'm going to go actually look up what does calligraphy actually mean. Fancy penmanship, especially highly decorative writing, handwriting, as with many great flourishes, the art of writing beautifully. That looks like the closest definition to mine. So on your paper, you actually have another row where you actually, you have to write the dictionary definition. And so I'm going to go over here and just for the sake of time, I'm going to copy and paste that. Okay, and so this is what you're going to be doing at this center. You're going to be building words by looking up the meanings of parts of the words and then trying to create one big definition that uses all of those parts. Now sometimes a word might have two or three different suffixes that all mean the same thing. So you might have characterized by as one suffix and characterized by as another. You don't really need to say characterized by, characterized by. You just have to say it one time. Um, again, the point of this is trying to make one definition that makes sense within um, something that you'll remember or understand if you came across this word in, in your readings. Now you're going to be looking at words that come from the Renaissance. Excommunicate, receptive, and reformation. And seeing how those words are built. After you get done with that, on the back of this page, I want you to write a letter to Leonardo da Vinci using your calligraphy pens, because that's what would have been used at that time. Tell him which of his inventions you see used in today's world. Now, obviously, you probably don't know many of his inventions, so if you go back to our website under center number two, you'll see a little video here for da Vinci's inventions. And you can watch that if you... You don't have to watch the whole thing. If you find one that you that sparks an interest and that's the one you want to write about, then you can. But he's got seven inventions here that he talks about. You need to pick one. And what you're going to find is that Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci was very far ahead of his time. I mean, some of the things that he invented back then weren't useful then, but we use in some way today. So you're going to explain how that device is similar and different to what he actually envisioned when he created it. Um, make a sketch. Sketching is done with a pencil of the invention both then and now. But the most important part of this, of course, is going to be your letter. So make sure you have that done before you do your sketching. Okay? If you um, finish before class is over, you can turn this in. If you do not finish, then it is homework and it is due tomorrow. Do not wait until you have all of your centers piled up on you. Make sure you finish this one tonight for homework.